Get ready for your daily dose of marketing strategies and tactics from entrepreneurs with the guile and experience to help you find success in any marketing capacity. You're listening to Marketing School with your instructors, Neil Patel and Eric Sue. Hello and welcome to another episode of Marketing School. I'm Eric Sue. And I'm Neil Patel. And today we're going to talk about how to increase your form field conversion rates. So this one's going to be a doozy and there's a lot of different ways to go about it. But I mean, at a very high level, if you want to have a higher conversion rate, well, you can always have less form fields. But the thing is, your quality is going to be lower. You know, I've tried messing around with this quite a bit. Um, and, you know, Neil's tried messing around with this quite a bit with... Uh, with a lot of different tests that I've seen him run in the past. So, Neil, what are your thoughts around um, these increasing conversion rates on form fields? What I like doing is asking for a lot of form fields, but I don't like asking them for them all on one page. So I break it up into two or three pages. Usually three is the magic number for me. And I'll ask basic questions on the first page, like URL, name, and email. And then I start getting into company size, revenue, et cetera, on the second page. The last page, I usually ask for phone number and maybe a few other things. But if you break it up into steps, you'll typically get like 20 or 30% more leads. Plus, if someone just wants to give you like their name and email, they don't want to fill out the rest, you'll have partial leads. And then you can drip those people and still get them re engage and try to get them to fill out the rest of the information. That's funny because that's exactly what we do on the single grain um, site. So on there, we have uh, it's, it's three steps and it's, it's, it's exactly that. If they fill out the uh, their name and their email, we're going to get that. It's going to go into our drip campaign and it's going to say um, it's going to say partially filled out and they're going to be dripped a different sequence. Um, and, you know, we use drip for that. They're going to be tagged differently. What we noticed was that after doing the three pages, originally at the very top, it said, you know, step one, step two, step three. Right. Um, there's like a there's like a progress bar where they're going past it. And I think we tested removing the progress bar and that increased our conversion rate. Originally, I don't think we had the progress bar. So we did not have the progress bar before. And then we added the progress bar afterwards and our conversion rate went up by 40 percent. So your mileage may vary. Uh, the way we use to test uh, these different form fields is visual website optimizer. Yeah, and you can also make little simple tweaks to your form fields to get more uh, proper leads. It's not always about getting the most amount of leads and the most amount of conversions. It's about getting the most amount of conversions for qualified leads. So one other thing that we like doing is we'll test things such as instead of saying put in your email, we say put in your business email. By doing little uh, tweaks like that to the messaging within the box or the form fields, you'll find that you can get more relevant qualified leads. It's really simple. doesn't take much to do. And the quality of the leads makes a huge difference. So that way, when salespeople follow up, you'll start closing way more. Yeah. And one thing you can do as well, we noticed that adding the little pre-fill where you have like a grayed out phone number in the background, or you might have like a grayed out example uh, number like John Smith, for example, or name as, like John Smith, um, that has helped. You know, we've been observing people, um, you know, through through uh, video recordings on our site. And that has increased our conversion rate by, by 5%, believe it or not. That's something as trivial as that. Um, just making it easier for people to understand, it actually does uh, it does work. So one other thing I think you can also do is we used to have asterisks by um, the form fields that were required. We have since then removed those, and that has added a slight bump in our, our conversion rate too. I also like leveraging exit pop-ups on my form field pages. So for the people who don't fill in the form fields, I literally will do an exit pop-up with very similar, if not the same form fields within a modal. And I found that to help me collect more leads. I don't know why it just works because it's like they're leaving your site, getting some, showing them one more offer to fill in their information is better than showing them nothing. On the single grain site, um, or when you're trying to for fill out the form field on the third page, I believe, um, that's where you, you can select the services that you're interested in. And previously, we restricted it only to a few select services that we have. And then what we did afterwards is we added a check mark for um, other, and it became an open field where they can write whatever they want. And that's proven to be a lot more. Um, this doesn't necessarily increase conversion rates per se, um, but it does help us get more insight as to what the customer really wants. And oftentimes, it's not just the services that they're um, that that we're offering; it's other stuff that they're they're looking for, and we can help them um, down the road. And that that's you know for us, you know, lifetime value for customers um, pretty high. Um, and if we're able to help them additionally, you know, we're going to go out there and and go the extra mile and that to us is additional you can count that as additional conversion down the road one interesting example of form fields that i saw that helps them boost their conversions was they integrated the form fields into a story so think of like a paragraph and i believe this was for a car dealership so it'd be like 
hi, my name is, and there'd be blank, they fill it in, comma, I'm looking to buy a, a Nissan, and then they would put in the model, they would just drop down on the, drop down and select the model, in blank color, and they would pick the color, and I want X, Y, and Z, and you can reach me at, and then they put in the phone number. So by creating a paragraph, like a type of story where people just fill in the blanks, I've seen data at least. I haven't really tested it much on my end, but I found that uh, increased conversions at least from the data I've seen. And when we did uh, run a test, it worked all right. The problem with a lot of our stuff, which is why I haven't run too many tests on it, I don't have cookie cutter options that people can pick, such as it's not as simple as buying a car where they can just select, I want a car, I want an SUV, I want it in red or black, et cetera. I think if you're looking for more detailed literature around form fields, I think Neil has some stuff written both on Quick Sprout and Neil Patel. Uh, Conversion Excel, I'm staring at uh, some of their some of their um, content right now. I mean, they have some good content around reducing form fields and also um, you know building sign up forms that actually convert. So take a look at those. I mean, you know, we, there's only so much we can cover in a 10 minute uh, podcast right here. But Neil, is there anything you'd like to throw in before we hop off? No, that's pretty much it. All right, great. That's it for this episode of Marketing School. We'll see you tomorrow. This session of Marketing School has come to a close. Be sure to subscribe for more daily marketing strategies and tactics to help you find the success you've always dreamed of. And don't forget to rate and review so we can continue to bring you the best daily content possible. We'll see you in class tomorrow right here on Marketing School.